uh, orphans and emotional distress that these children go through. Please give a welcoming hand to Dr. Kevin Kelly. I want to thank Cameron and Bita for organizing this this evening and for always standing up and doing the right thing. I think we're all here tonight because we support them and all the works that they do. And so I'd like a good round of applause for Cameron and Vita. Thank you. I mean, we're all gathered here because we care about the lives of children. We care about what happens in our community. And we want to understand what we can do more. Um, many of us have children of our own. And many of us have grandchildren. And as we tuck our kids into bed at night, and as we see them off to school each day, when we think about those children who don't have that, it, uh, it's really rather heartbreaking. And it gives one pause to think, um, what is it that we can do as a community and as a society to kind of help them along the way? How can we make their road easier? Um, the orphaned and, you know, abandoned children in our society are really the most vulnerable members of our society. And I think that it's long been said by many scholars prior to myself that um, the strength of a society is how we help and care for those that are the most vulnerable. It's a sign of strength in terms of how we provide for them and how we create a safety net for those that are most vulnerable and in need. So, as we look at our society in general, we can see that as we've grown as people and as we've migrated to different parts of the world, the safety net that was once there, the family, is not there in the same level of strength that it once was. Um, families move, they move for different reasons, they have, uh, they are going off to pursue their own goals and dreams in life, which is all great, but what that's created is the, the space that the family used to be there and the community used to be there to pick up where there was the need for those that are most vulnerable and to take in somebody who was off orphaned or abandoned as a child. That has frayed a little bit. So we're now reliant more upon organizations like this to help recognize the needs of children and to see how we can fill those needs. Um, I think if we all reflect back at some of the most vulnerable members of our society, we see them every day. We see them on the streets and many of us wonder what can we do and is this a lost cause. With children who have been orphaned or abandoned, they have, this has happened through no no fault of their own, of course. As that youngest member, th their control of their own fate and of their own life is in our hands at this level. So as we look at that, we look to where we can fill in the gaps. In earlier years, my grandfather, he was a child of the Great Depression. And he was an orphan at a young age, but being a 10-year-old, he was left there. His parents moved on, they were ravaged by the Depression, and they had to go on and find their own way. So he became the caretaker of his younger three siblings, and they traveled throughout the country in middle America and lived in barns and lived in uh, houses when they were able, and they made their way in life. Today, society's a little bit different. And certainly in, in the city, society is vastly different. So those kids that are left alone and abandoned can be children of the street. So that's where we then try and step up and say, as children of the street, what does their fate become? If we look at what's meaningful to us in our lives, if you can think back to what your earliest memory was of your family, I'm not going to ask anybody to speak up. I'm not asking anybody to volunteer or say what their earliest memories of family was and their earliest memories of trauma. What, what happened that hurt? 
and think about how those formed you as an individual. How did those early traumas, early hurts, early problems form you and how you feel today in the world? And then how do they form you as a parent? If you have children, how does that early life form you? How did you come to be the parent that you are today? So we give our children um, a sense of who they are as parents. We tell them things. So they come into the world with their own emotional DNA. They come into the world with um, personality traits that are given to bo by both parents. Um, they resemble, I have four children, I have two that are probably closer reliant in personality to my husband and two that are probably a little bit closer to me. Of course, when they show those traits that are stellar, I say they're most like me. <laughs> when they're a problem, I say they're like their dad, but you're a tough crowd. <laughs> There's not a smile among you. That was the funny part. So we give them a sense of, of, of who they are in the world by repeating to them things like, you're just like your father. You're just like your aunt. That's what your father would say. That's what your mother would say. That's what your grandmother was like when she was growing up. These orphan kids don't have that. They don't have somebody who helps them to recall who they are. They don't have that person who helps them build up their sense of who they are in the world. They don't have that sense of belonging and inclusion. So what we want to do is we want to help provide that for them by serving them in our community and stepping forward and helping them to feel a sense of belonging by who they are in, in this community so that they can then become productive members of our society. If you look at what the cost is to our society, you'll see that when there's somebody who uh, is an orphan, they are more likely to develop substance abuse issues. We see that in our facility today. Um, there's a number of kids that have uh, adults that, as children, we, we work with adults, but as children, their trauma was severe. They were, they were abandoned, they were orphaned, they were unsuccessfully adopted, and their emotional pain exists with them today. And their way of dealing with their emotional pain is through what we call self-medication. Um, so their self-medication is through the use of drugs and alcohol. So a orphan child is more likely to develop issues of substance abuse. They're more likely to engage in early sexual contact. They are more likely to be truant. They're more likely to be on the street at an earlier age. And so if we're to look at it from a very pragmatic sense and talk about what, what's the cost to our society, the cost to the society is that those people become people that we support for the rest of their lives if we don't do the early intervention now. So if those people are going into substance abuse, we're, as a community, paying for that substance abuse treatment or the ravages of that substance abuse. If they're people that are becoming early, involved in early sexual activity, they're the people that are going to be in the system with early pregnancies, they're going to be the people that don't take care of themselves physically and become somebody that we have to take care of long term. If they're truant, they're not contributing members of society and we're furthering that welfare state. So they are people that, if you have no other reason other than looking at financial self-interest, better to take care of it now than to wait long term. We also have the fact of, if we look to our own children and pro provide for them the example that the right thing to do is to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. So if we're showing them the right way to provide a society that helps nurture those that are most vulnerable, what better way than to show you care and are ready to step up to the plate than to help those that have nobody else to help them. 
So for no other reason than financial self-interest, there's what's morally right. So I appreciate and applaud all of you who've come here tonight and shown an interest in how we can help these youngest and most vulnerable members to become more productive, happier, healthier, and a part of our growing and loving society. Thank you. Dr. Khaleri, where are you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Both of you are great supporters, and thank you very much. I just wanted to start by, uh, first of all, thanking my wife for putting all of this together. Tita, you're amazing. Thank you. And uh, I'm telling you, without her, this wouldn't happen. And this is not good. I'm standing right here. Uh, and of course, we all know that now she's an acupuncturist and herbal medicine. I got to tell you, I'm so proud of you. And this is the place that we all come for meditation and Tai Chi and treatment. A little, okay, here we go. Some, can you all hear me? Okay, well, I got to. Anyway, this is not about me. This is not about Beta. This is, not, this is about a lot of people you see here. I want our board of directors and board of advisors, please stand up and introduce yourself. Where are you guys? Board of directors, please. <laughs> board of advisories. Dr. Amir Ahmadi, please. Where are you all? Dr. Rod. Where's everybody else? Peter, come on. Okay, well, this organization all started by me suggesting it and a group of great people stepping in and really making it happen. So it is not me, it's not Beta, it's all of us. And in fact, it's not about all of us. It's all about these children that we've been out there to support. So first and foremost, on behalf of myself and the boards that we have here, thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Number two, I wanted to tell you guys that you are all privileged. You are all privileged by, for being here because a lot of people in this world, they do want to do something for the orphans and help the orphans. Everybody think about it. How can I help these children? Rape, beat up, neglected children out there. They don't know how. Well, this is the way to do it. This organization has no office has no employees, everything we make, everything that's given to the organization goes 100% to the kids and children and bring good stuff to these kids. So I want to tell you guys that you are privileged for being here and being able to help these kids because these kids are our children, the society's children. The goal of this organization is not just buying gifts for orphans and neglected children. It is not. We do it so far in the last year. We're, all, we're coming to our one-year anniversary of this organization. And so far, we have been to three or four orphanages. We have supported close to about, I would say, 150 to 200 kids, right, Nushin? We've done almost 200 kids. We have bought them their wish list, what they needed, clothing, blankets, shoes, pants, underwears, things they don't have. If you go to these orphanages, what do you see? You see a little room, I can tell you, as big as this area, like a jail cell, a little bed in the corner, a little closet, half of this size. When you open it up, there are two hangers in there. Two hangers, it's all empty. And these kids, some of them don't even have blankets to sleep with. And when they get the blankets or the goodies that we take for them, they're happy, as if you're giving them a Rolls Royce. This is sad, people. It's really sad. And we're all blessed, we're all privileged, we're all living a dream. Think about it. You wake up in the morning, you're healthy, you have your children, you have your family, you thank God. We're good. We have a roof over our shoulder. We, have, we are blessed. I mean, we are blessed for all the goods and bads we've been given by God. But these children don't have it. So why am I telling you all this? Because some of this stuff has to change because these children are getting abused, raped, beat up by people who call themselves foster parents out there. 
There are a lot of problems with our fast foster family care, correct? Mr. Kate is here. Uh, he works with children and foster families. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Dr. Paymon and Kate and Justin, thank you. And, and he works with the system, so you know he knows the problems. He's spoken on the radio, I listened to you, and I enjoyed it very much. But I gotta tell you, our foster family care in California has to change, and one of the organiz this organization, one of the goals that we have is to possibly try to lobby and change the foster family care so qualified people could actually take on these children who we call orphans and neglected and be able to care for them. Give them the roof over their shoulders and heads and be able to take care of them and educate them. I want you, to, I want you all to actually help me out with this cause along with you and many people who are out there. We could probably write a motion and bring it up and hopefully we get a petition out there get it signed and get it approved, at least for California, and that should be something we all gotta do. The next thing we gotta do, we have problem with adoption laws in California. It is not so easy to adopt a child in California. In fact, it is so difficult that some people go out to different countries and adopt, and it's easier to bring it into the United States, especially California. Why is that? Because there is a lot of uh, propaganda and there's a lot of money being passed around behind the scene for these children who don't have any care out there. Each child that is in one of the orphanages or group homes is the government is paying or state is paying six thousand dollar per month to keep them there, right? Six thousand dollars. Where's all that money going? Don't you think with $6,000 we can find good parents out there for these kids? <laughs> I don't know which child needs 6000 But anyway, we have to change the adoption laws, and maybe that's our next step. In California, we can change the laws with the help of many of you. But tonight, we are here because we need money. This organization needs money. We are funding it. A lot of good-hearted people out there are funding it, and... You know, if you guys are giving to this organization, make sure that, be sure that you will be paying a nonprofit organization. It'll be tax deductible. So we had a goal for tonight to be able to raise some funds. I'm not going to sit here and auction what we're going to do, but we do have some goodies that we're going to give away. We have some gift certificates uh, from Dr. Mir Ahmedi. Dr. Mir Ahmedi, you're great. Thank you very much. You're always, and from day one, I'll tell you. Dr. Mehmedi has been a huge supporter along with uh, the rest of the people. So I got to tell you, when we go to these orphanages, and in fact, next week, October 13th, Sunday, we're scheduled to go to the next orphanage. We're going to be visiting 60 children, and these children are from age of 4 to 15, right? 2, 2 to 13. Oh, 2 to 18 which is, uh, these kids are very young. I mean, two-year-old being an orphan, that, that's just heartbreaking. Next week, we're going there. We got the wish list that what these kids need. Uh, we have buyers who would go out there to the wholesalers and try to buy the stuff. And I'll tell you, some of the wish lists that we have is just funny to many of you, but they like T-shirts. They want jackets with hood because it's cold at nights. They want blankets. They want shoes. They, they, they want shoes, people. I mean, these things are ordinary for you and I, but guess what? It's important to them. And when we go there, we actually see these children are happy. They're happy to see us being there, even if it's for a couple of hours. For two hours, and they're smiling, they're having a good time. We take in and out trucks or some food for them. They're, I mean, they're having a blast with it. And at the end, we get some notes from them. These children write notes, right? How many notes have we collected so far? You should read their notes, the little notes they write. Thank you for being. I had a great day. This was one of the best days of my life. This type of thing. And, oh, here, by the way, uh, we had these brochures done uh, for LACCG. Thank you, Pedro John. Getting this done for, in, in about a matter of eight hours, he <laughs> did this brochure. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But uh, I tell you, we got a bunch of great people here. Yeah, I just don't know where to start, but I got to tell you, all the notes that they're giving us, all the love 
that uh, we hear from these children is it children it's just heartbreaking anyway anybody from LACCG wants to pick up this microphone and talk I want to give all of my board members please it's it's an open microphone and whoever wants to come in and have a talk please honor us Dr. Mir Ahmadi uh, when uh, Comron sent out the note about a year ago, I'm Dr. Mike Miramedi, uh, nephrologist, for some of you who may not have seen me before. And when 130 people replied that they are willing to get together for the gathering, and uh, then I talked to Cameron and I said we should form an organization. And thank God to him and the rest of the good guys that we have here, we formed the board of director, board of trustee, and the rest of the people and the organization is uh, built. So tonight I want to share with you some of my dreams. Uh, Kamran says, don't go out too far. We still don't have this. Why are you talking about your dream? I said, you know, this is how I am. I mean, what can I do? So my dream is to uh, and you guys can help. We have about six or seven board of trustee. Comron said we cannot buy anything unless we have 20 board of trustee. I said, okay. So I want you two guys help out. Give me your name. You want to be a board of trustee or not? And as soon as we get to 20, then we go and buy something. $500,000, $600,000 small home. And we make it a... Uh, office for the <coughs> organization, and from that point on, will grow. Two, want you to help out to find a, a big name entertainer that can promote the organization. My name is okay, but it doesn't bring people in. <laughs> Your name maybe, but <laughs> not mine. Kamran is excellent, but we need a big time, really a big name. People like Gugush or Shorel Dashlu or a lot of other people that you guys may know. And that would also help us uh, significantly. So please help us with the Board of Trustee. It's only $600 per year and a lot of other expenses that comes after that. And also hopefully we'll see all of you and a lot more on uh, December 5th that we're going to have our first gala. Thank you very much. Sorry that it uh, took too much time. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, welcome Mr. Kasheri to this group. We are so happy you're here. We are so blessed that you're among us. We thank God that you pulled out. You're a great soul, great soldier, and we're so happy that you have made it out here with us. Okay? Number two, Sina Bayojon, thank you very much. Mehran Amini, people from radio, all of you, advertising, Khan Simi Tehrani, Khayli Mawchakir, Amas Hamey, Khan Jacqueline, Hamey, Bogan, Tashakur Mikonam, thank you very much for being here tonight. Now, we have some, uh, Mr. Sinai, thank you for donating the Nook, and thank you very much. We have a lot of gifts from uh, a lot of our friends here that we're going to raffle. Before we raffle the whole thing, who wants to donate some major money around here? Dr. Mir Ahmed is number one. Thank you, $1,000. I will match your $1,000 myself. So here we go. Here's two. What do we got here? Doctor, $5,000. Dr. Khaleghi, $5,000 creative care. Thank you very much. Doctor, what do we got? Two, how much? $1,000. Dr. Abayi, thank you very much. Doctor? I'll match it? Let's go. I'll match you. 1,000? I'll match Dr. Khodadadi's 1,000 again. Thank you very much. So, so far, we got a few thousand. Anybody else who wants to participate in this? So far, we got that 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. How much was it? Yours won? 5,000, 5,000, we got 10. What else do we have? What do we got? 1,000 there, thank you very much, 11,000. 
Our goal is 25 tonight. Dr. Dr. Khaleri and Dr. Karen Khaleri from Creative Care. Can I take a pic? Doctor, can we take a picture with you? <laughs> Okay, Dr. Mir Ahmadi, Dr. Khodadadi, Dr. Abai, Dr. Khaleri, Yadidi, anybody else? Are we good? Okay, uh, I'm too. Okay, so why don't we do some raffles and whoever wants to take some of these brochures home, you know, you don't have to just take some of these brochures home and basically you can go on our website. Now, here we go, guys. The website is ready. It's laccg.com. I repeat, laccg.com. Go there, become a member, and I'll tell you how the membership works. It's only $120 a year. Now, if you want to become a board of trustee, that means you will be printed on our letterhead, and this is a prestigious organization. In fact, I am very proud personally i've been asked by many boards to be members of theirs and i've rejected almost all boards out there this is the one and only board that i'm totally proud of being part of it so being part of the letterhead being a poor board of trustee it only costs you six hundred dollars by paying that you can always come to the orphanages with us for free you don't have to pay anymore and if you are a corporation you want to pay more it's all tax deductible, Dr. Khaleri. You sure don't want to pay more? <laughs> all right. But anyway, take these brochures and uh, donate whatever you want. But look, we need, it's just the, not the money. We need people. We need all of you to get out there and deliver the message. It's a big message we're giving out to people. Big message is these children are getting wasted out there. If we can help some of these people, some of these kids, it's a great cause. Sam, you want to give us a talk a little bit? You sure? Are you good tonight? Oh, yeah, you don't have a voice. Okay. All right. We got Sam McAllen here. Sam, thank you for being here tonight. Sam is a great member of LACCG from day one, and he's an inspiration to all of us. As you can see, we have more people sitting than tickets in this bowl. So remember, we're here for a fundraiser. We're here helping children, children who have never seen their own parents, children who have never, ever received a gift, children who look in your eyes and they cry and they say, what is this? Is this for me? What is this gift for? So, guys, Cami has spoken. A lot of people have spoken. And I know some of the board members do not want me to ask for donations. But please play, pay so we can do our raffle for the sake of the children. So, Ilana, Jun, are we done? Tickets from Dr. Mir Ahmadi. We have acupuncture treatments from myself, and we have one other one from Ms. Daniela. Do you know who that's from, the basket? Oh, from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> She's putting her bow on right now. There's a lot of big hearts that are sitting in this room, and many more big hearts 
that are on its way coming. This is for a very beautiful cause. I know that there's a lot of organizations out there that we all want to help, and some of us have a limit on how much we're going to donate. But as Cameron said earlier this evening, truly this organization came with one thought. That started with my daughter, Sabrina, who said, Mom, Dad, what happens to those kids who don't have parents? Who takes care of those kids? And that's how all of this started. And thanks to Cami, he put it on Facebook. Who wants to come up and help me with kids, kids who don't have parents? And believe it or not, we have 1,700 followers in less than a year. So this is nothing. Over 2,000 2, now. And guys, please spread the word. Thank you. And I also want to thank my dear volunteers for tonight who helped us out. Are we ready now? We're going to do a mix. So number seven, five, four, five, zero, zero. Yay! This is for the nook. Yes? Serious? <laughs> yes.
Let's see. Who wants implants? Implants we got. Oxen. How much? How much? 500. 500. Anybody else? Implants. Tell them the value of an implant. 700. Cameron. Tell them the value of an implant. Cameron. Tell them the value of an implant. What is the value of it? I know Dr. Anukari charges. It's very, very expensive because of who she is and uh, she, she's, she's famous, I mean, we know that. So, okay, we got 700 for the first one. Auction one, or one in play? It's 2400 value. For the surgical part, but from beginning to end it's close to 4000 Okay, so it doesn't matter what it costs, she says it costs about 4000 but she will take care of it with the auction money that we got to receive, LACCG. So, 700 once, 700 twice, and so 700 Okay, so you go, you go see Dr. Anita. We got one more implant, one more implant, so we got one more to go. 500 here, Mr. Ronnie. You want implant? I need six of them. How about, let's start, come on, let's go. You good? 600. 600. Implant people, this is a $4,000 project. Hello. How much? That's the question he wants breast implant. We got plastic surgeons here. <laughs> I love that. Great sense of humor. All right. Implants. Anybody? Five? We got 600. Anybody needs implants? It could be for your loved ones. Could be for somebody you know. It doesn't have to be for you. Okay, well, here we go. Once. Twice. Anybody? Implants? Doctor? Okay, okay, okay. Anybody? Okay, once, twice, three times. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you Services? Oh, this is Dr. Pudaleri, the, the 90210 doctor. She is the doctor. Never for okay. okay, what he offers is not good for us. So, Anyway, thank you very much, people, for being here. Hold on, we got two more. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, to continue on our raffle, I'd like to say our last... Uh, I think we had a great turnout, but I want to ask any of you people who are here tonight if you really want to grab this microphone and say a couple of words. So whoever wants to come up here and talk a little bit, by all means, come on in. We got Lisa said. My 
name is Maya, and uh, I used to be a social worker for the Department of Children and Family Services. Child Protective Services. So this this cause is very, very close and dear to my heart. Um, while I was in well, a social worker, I decided to go to law school. So I became a lawyer and I actually represented children in court. So the foster children that we are talking about here tonight were my clients. And uh, if there is anyone who knows and who understands the need to help these children, it would really be me because I saw firsthand the kind of services that these children needed and how limited um, the budget was and just the social workers just couldn't, couldn't keep up with the needs of these children. Um, a lot of these children are teenagers. They're, they're not what is considered adoptable and they basically end up in foster homes, long-term foster homes and they just, they stay there. They stay there until they turn 21 actually. Um, so there is a need, a big, huge need for mentors out there. I encourage every single one of you to get involved. If you can't donate money, at least donate your time. Become a mentor for these children. And uh, take them out. Go out, see them. Take them out one day a month even. Makes a huge difference for these children. I know for my kids, under my care, uh, they, it, made, it made a huge difference. I had a teenager. I was representing a teenager in court and she was very traumatized and it turned out that course therapy was the only thing that helped her for her, you know, with her, all of her um, psychiatric issues and we had a heck of a time getting a judge to order horse therapy for her and the department would fight us and fight us and uh, and then we just decided to have fundraisers, you know, private fundraisers so we could have her continue her therapy, which turned out to be the best thing that um, this child needed. So there is a lot that this money can do for, for these kids, and I encourage, it's one of the best feelings you will ever have, um, most rewarding feelings you will ever get to help these kids because they really, really have no one. They have no one else, especially as they get closer to um, become emancipated, become younger adults. They don't know how to enter the world as adults. So they need guidance and they need to be in program that teaches them, you know, life skills. So thank you, thanks for being here and I'm so happy to be part of this. Thank you. Anyone else? Anybody else would like to honor us with a speech or thoughts? We want to know how you feel about being here tonight. How does it feel? Seriously, how does it feel to be here? Seriously. Doesn't it feel good? It's good. Mr. K, do you want to give a couple of minutes of talk? Because I know you've been waiting to give this talk because I know you give this speech on the radio, so please. Actually, I didn't want to talk because I really don't know what to say. You guys are doing a fantastic job. I'm so happy and pleased and honored to be here to see all of you. Um, I have been working, privileged to be working with children for the past 15 years of my life. And uh, as you said, yes, the department, the county of Los Angeles, all these organizations, if they are not really out there, we cannot do a thing. Currently, I am reviewing about three to 400 kids' cases every month. So the number is just crazy. We answer 100,000 calls just in LA County for child abuse and child abuse and child neglect. This, this, the number is just to the roof. So I cannot say any more about how important every dollar of you guys is for these kids. And as you just said, thank you. The time that you guys can put in. It, it's so important. Also put the time with your own family too and with other kids that are out there that may need you. Um, I don't want to take any time away. I'm so honored to be here. I appreciate Mr. Yedidi's help and assistance in this, and all of you guys. It's so wonderful to see all of you. Thank you. Is there, is there a website, is there a place that all of us could go in there and see how we could help these kids, or LACCG is the only way now, right? I think so. All right, well, 
Merci as I'm I'm going to talk a little Farsi. Who minds that? Do you mind? By the way, Mr. Rakon is here from my office. Thank you very much, Ms. Rakon. Thank you very much for being here. Who doesn't speak Farsi here other than me? Uh, I, uh. Oh, Dr. Robin is here. Oh, doctor! <laughs> Thank you for coming. There's head of the internal medicine of Cedar Sinai standing right there. Thank you for honoring us for being here tonight. Dr. Rob, David Romain is here. So, this is how you can do it. Thank you very much for this. اگه بتونید این واقع بشین بیشتر با این LACCG به نظر من این یک کاز بسیار خوبیه برای همه ما مثلا کسانی که بچه داریم و میتونیم که این بچه ها اگه پدر مولن نرشته باشن چی میشه در ضمن بهتون بگم راجب نیلا و آیلا خیلیاتون از من پرسیدین You are doing good uh, الان برگشتن مدرسه پیچ و مهرهای بدنشو در بردن خوشبختانه داره را میره اما هنوز روز صورتاشون سکار هستش و زخماشون هستش و با مادر بزرگشون لابد خانوم زندگی میکنن فعلا یک مقدار ما پول جمع کردیم براشون اما اون هم داره استفاده میشه برای خرج ماهیانشون و امیدواریم که بتونیم براشون یه فان ریزنگ جدا از LACCG بذاریم که همه گی کمک بکنن برحال مرسی از همه که اومدیم Give us the honor and pleasure of being here Until next time, by the way, let's talk about next week. You guys want to know what we're going to do. October 13th is Sunday, next Sunday. We are going to our next orphanage in Camarillo. We are visiting about 60 children. Whoever wants to come, they must be a member of LACCG or part of board of trustee or board of directors or advisory. You must RSVP. This is not like last time, whoever comes to federal building saying, I want to get on the bus, is like, okay, come on, let's go. No. This time, we need to give the name and information of people who are coming with us to the organization. Otherwise, you cannot get on the bus. I'm going to say it in Farsi. هفته دیگه یک شنبه ما داریم میریم یه دن اورفنج ببینیم توی کمریو یک شنبه ساعت 9 نه نیم توی فدرال بیلدینگ میت میکنیم با باس همگی میریم اونجا این دفعه هر کی بخواد بیاد باید از قبل رزرو بکنه باید ممبر باشه ما باید اسمشو بدیم به اونجا اسم و آدرس شو باید بدیم به اونجا که داریم میام چون اونا میخوام بدونن کی داره میاد این بچه ها رو الان مقدار سیکیوریتی قوی تر شد اینجا و کسانی که ممبر نیستند نمیتونن بیان کسانی که ممبر هستند باید RSVP بکنن که بیان و هر کی هم میخواد بیاد با ما تو این ارگانیزیشن و سوار این اتوبوس بشم باید 50 دلار بده چرا چون خرج داره اتوبوس ها اینا که میخواد بریم 50 دلار هم میگیریم قوانین خودشو داره تو این باس میریم میخندیم a party, a party bus in Havigan. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have a great time going there. Amo unjo ke mirim, aks nemitunim begirim, bara bachoha nemitunim geriye bokonim, bachoha ro nemitunim ehsas bad beishun bedim, mirim baashun bazi mikonim, harf mizanim, mikhandim, va iki do saat unjo hastim, hadayashun ro beishun midim, va bar migadim. Har ki mikhad ma ro join bokone, baad bere tu ye LACCG tu ye Facebook. LACCG یا میتونه بره توی وبسایت ما خانم موجگان تایگر و خانم نوشین و آقای راد پزشکی اینها همه مسئول وبسایت و مسئول فیسبوک ما هستن باید RSVP بکنید بدون رزرو کردن قبلی نمیتونید بیاین اینجا اگر بیاین متاسفانه باید بگیم جا نداریم یا نمیتونید تشبیرین چون اونجا به ما اجازه نمیدن که شما با ما بیاین So whoever wants to join us in our next trip Please RSVP. If you don't, you can't go. Simple as that. If you're not a member, you can't go. You want to go with us, you become a member. RSVP, we have to give your name and information to the orphanage, and then you can join us. Any questions? No pictures to be taken, no crying for the kids, not making them feel bad. Don't say, oh, I'm sorry you lost your mom and dad, I'm sorry you're here. None of that. Okay? So, questions? Comments? 
It's been a pleasure and honor of meeting a lot of you and Atkiam Rajiv Obamacare. Whoever wants help with Obamacare health insurance, be it. In our way, Peter, alone, Atkiam Rajiv Obamacare. Salam, I'm Peter Purvera. I'm Turkey, 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 I'm Yeah, yeah.